Ready? Call to order the meeting for the Green Bay Traffic Bicycle Pedestrian Commission meeting for Monday, August 27, 2018. A roll call. No, we'll skip over that. Let's go to. Probably yeah. a good idea just for, for the verbatim minutes. Oh, do you want that? Yeah. Okay. Roll call. Members present. Chairman Matt Keepers. Sorry, identify everybody or do I? Uh, yeah. You can do it however you'd like if you want to name them or if, if you individually want to do it. I don't want to screw up Dan's name, so go ahead, Dan. <laughs> Dan Thino, here. Alder Craig Stevens, here. Uh, Chuck Carroll, here. Ray Smith, here. Brad Stroll, here. Okay, let's go on to item B. One, I have one question. Oh. Aren't we supposed to have a little recording? It is recording. Oh, they always had one up here, too. Oh. So they can go back through the minutes. Not, we used to do it that way, but now that we've gone to the video system, I've, I don't see the need okay. to have that. That was mainly for doing uh, minutes the old way. Mm -hmm. So the new way, we already we have video and audio. Okay. So it was more of a back. I had actually, the first couple of meetings, used it as a backup just in case something got screwed up, but things seem to be working. So I, just, I trust the system now, I guess. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good Item B, approval of the agenda. Approval to Monday, August 27, 2018, Traffic, Bicycle, and Pedestrian Commission meeting agenda. So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Approval of the minutes. Okay, give us one second here. Okay. See approval of the minutes, approval of the June 18, 2018 traffic, bicycle, and pedestrian commission meeting. So moved. Motion been made. Second. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. D, regular business. General business report <coughs> from the police department of 2018 second quarter serious injury and fatality crashes. I, uh, distributed some hard copies if you will um, there's just the one for uh, the second quarter yep. um, I'll go through real quickly everybody have a copy up there yep mm -hmm. I think I made it up yep the Green Bay Police Department uh, report number is 18-204678 the uh, yeah. The crash occurred at the intersection of Main Street at Grove Avenue which is uh, the near east side downtown uh, Monday, April 30th at 4.58 p.m., a motorcycle occupied by a sole occupant who, of course, was a driver, was westbound on Main Street approaching Grove Avenue. Um, if you're familiar with that area, there's a gradual curve in the roadway there, and it's not straight. Um, he left the roadway, struck the north curb, causing the motorcycle to become airborne and ejecting the driver. Uh, he was not wearing a helmet. He struck the roadway and suffered severe head trauma. Um, the driver was a 47-year-old male from Green Bay. He passed away on May 6th as a result of the injury sustained in the crash. The motorcycle actually ended up landing on top of him, his upper body as well. So mm -hmm. um, he was unconscious at the scene and he never regained consciousness. Um, no drugs or alcohol were suspected. Um, there was a little bit of erratic driving described by witnesses prior to the crash, so we don't know if it was a medical thing. Um, but in any event, uh, he was the, the sole passenger and the sole occupant on the bike in which typically is not going to be a, a, a reconstruction for that type of crash. So we did not recon it. We had a full report, of course, police report. Um, but uh, that's all I have on that, unless there's any questions. Any questions? I just have one. You said westbound on Main Street, and he hit the north curb. So it sounded like he was somewhat overcorrecting for that, because that's a right curve. He yeah, curves so to the good. left, and he hit the to the right. Oh, OK. The front wheel of the, the motorcycle right. struck the curb and then ejected him into the bike. Um, and he wasn't necessarily traveling at a real high speed. Uh, nobody at least mentioned that it seemed out of the ordinary. So right. it's just a, an unfortunate huh. set of circumstances. Okay. okay, item one, do I hear a motion to receive advice on file? Okay. 
Okay, motion second. made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Two initial requests. Request by the traffic engineer to remove the no parking except Sunday zone on the west side of Wester, Webster Avenue from Day Street to Harvey Street. Many of you know the North Webster Avenue corridor is being reconstructed in 2019. Our utility contract will start in October of this year. Um, as part of the project work that uh, was done by our consultant, it was identified that there is a parking zone uh, in the travel lane that is on Webster. So it'll be the west side of Webster next to um, the Western Sacrament Church. Um, now the interesting thing is is that um, it, it's my belief because I, I looked at some aerial images that so sometime between 2010 and 2014 the church had purchased property to the west there used to be a, a home at this location they purchased this property and built a parking lot so obviously prior to that they must have had some some parking concerns and parking issues which is why they had most likely requested a parking zone on Webster Avenue. Um, now Webster Avenue, as you know, is a primary arterial street in our city. It also is a, identified as an emergency route from the interstate to the uh, hospital corridor, so <coughs> Bellin and sort of St. Vincent. Um, not exactly a, a place that you'd want to have parking anyway. Uh, you know, I can't think of really any arterials that we have that, that have this type of uh, condition unless they are you know on the fringe ends of them and they get into a, like say a lot more residential area but <coughs> this part of this corridor is uh, very high in trucks and uh, and traffic volume so it uh, didn't seem to be a real logical spot to have a parking zone um, that said with the addition of all the parking that they have and that uh, Day Street which is the street to the north uh, has unrestricted available parking um, available for the parish um, I make a recommendation to to remove that that parking zone and, and uh, basically have it restricted in that area mr. chairman so much so well motion been made do we have a second thanks all in favor aye motion carries three initial request by DPW and GBPD to remove the metered zone on Cherry Street from Washington Street to City Deck Okay, um, I'm going to bring this up also on Google Earth. Uh, location is uh, far west end of Cherry Street right before uh, Fox River and City Deck. Um, some may be familiar with this um, for accessing the deck. It's a, one of two prime spots for, uh, actually one of three, uh, of accessing the City Deck. Um, a number of years ago, I believe it was early 2000s, um, this roadway was actually wider, Nicolet National Bank. Uh, at the time, it uh, requested that the city vacate part of the city right away in order to accommodate the footprint of the building. Um, and that happened, which effectively narrowed that street to, uh, I believe it's 20 or 24 feet. It's very narrow. Um, so the both sides of that street are actually no stop your standing no stop understanding for that primary reason that the road was just too narrow to allow parking and, and two-way traffic. Um, that said, fast forward to mid-2000s, um, there was a request uh, at the time by the River Loft Apartments to have some sort of a loading area on, on um, Cherry Street. Uh, at that time, staff opposed the request. Um, um, it was uh, I don't recall if Traffic Commission or City Council was the one that had the final decision on it, but the loading zone was actually um, put in. It was more, I think it was actually a two-hour zone, sorry. Um, but its effectiveness was for uh, Riverloft apartments. 
Um, fast forward to, I believe it was November of uh, 17, where, um, where I mean, and this was the culmination of many, many years of just a lot of confusion with this zone. Um, if you look at the way it was signed, because uh, I believe this is even before the meter was in there. I'll just show you what the sign said. Signs, I should say. Um, there. So you have no stop understanding, and then you have except a halt to one hour, seven to three, Monday to Friday with the left arrow. So basically meaning from this post forward to that alley that you had a one hour zone within this time frame uh, outside of that time frame, it became no stop mm -hmm. standing. So, somewhat confusing. We always uh, receive challenges from people that receive citations in that area. I had changed the signage three, four times just to try <laughs> to make it clear. Um, this is as best that we could do. Um, then, uh, again, fast forward to November 17, and a request was made to have that be a metered stall. Hopefully, hopefully that was going to maybe make some clarity out of it. It actually, I think, made it worse um, because the fact that meters in general around the city, when they are not, uh, or I should say, outside of the time that you need to feed them money, um, basically become a free parking zone. So I think a lot of people were interpreting the meter as some place that you can park outside of those times when. The, and there's a charge for the spot. However, this spot right here says no stopping or standing outside of whatever the effectiveness of that zone is. So it became actually even more confusing. <laughs> so um, actually, uh, the police department um, had approached me on this and uh, asking, say, look, let's just get rid of this thing altogether. It's one spot. Um, since we're just talking about one meter? We're talking on about street. one meter. Talking about one meter, and, and just in case there's any questions about, you know, what about Riverloft apartments in this delivery area? Since then, there's been multiple loading zones in the nearby downtown that have been added since this. So um, that really addressed any of my questions about that. But again, I never really supported it from day one just because the roadway is so narrow and it's just been a, a problem to enforce. Um, and again, yes, it's one spot, so um, it's. It's certainly uh, DPW, uh, DPW's position, and, and as well as Green Bay Police Department by the request. And uh, and speaking with uh, Randy Scannell, he is uh, the alderman of the area, and he is also willing to try this on a 90-day trial. So we uh, recommend removal of, of the metered zone. And in essence, the no stop understanding becomes effective on the entire street. So move, we'll Mr. President and Mr. Chairman. I'll second that. Motion been made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Initial request, consideration with possible action on the request for all <coughs> for a traffic study of the intersection of Mirage Drive and Ferndale Drive, including potentially installing a yield or stop sign. Um, this actually came through as a request uh, via council, and then Alderman Jesse Burnett had contacted me afterward asking if I could speak with the requester to, uh, to give my opinion. Uh, I did follow up and talk to the gentleman. Um, he ended up, what it was was he, he was a worker and, and uh, retired relatively recently and had always traveled that intersection for the most part very early in the morning and uh, really didn't see any issues. Well, he retired and all of a sudden his whole time pattern changed and he was going through the intersection at different times and didn't realize that you know, the dynamics of the intersection change. Uh, over over the course of the day. So he was more or less saying, well, it kind of seems like maybe there should be a yield or stop there. So that was really pretty much the extent of it. Um, when I talked to him, <coughs> I explained to him that we have uh, no crash history at all at the intersection and that we have a lot of intersections uh, that are T-intersections or even multi-approach or uh, you know, four-leg intersections that are uncontrolled. It is okay to have an uncontrolled intersection um, you know, that control happens because either A, there's so much traffic volume coming to the intersection, or B, there's some sort of a safety or crash history that we're trying to correct. Um, we don't have any of those at this location. So uh, upon giving that explanation to this gentleman, uh, he seemed satisfied with uh, the answer and, and leaving it alone. So my recommendation, uh, and, and just so you know, I did uh, speak with Alderman Burnett on this, and he agreed. So. Uh, it was uh, his opinion, in, in my opinion, to uh, 
move forward with the recommendation receiving place on file. I make the motion to receive the place on file. Second. Motion been made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> 90, number five, 90 day trial terminations. Yeah, um, um, five through seven. Yeah, we can take five and six, I should say. Five, six, and actually seven um, is, is a lumped in as well. Okay. Yeah, that ruin don't, that's because it's uh, well, down by Bay Beach. It's a, basically we had to remove a larger zone, define a more specific zone and reestablish the rest. That's all that is. This is that uh, request that came forward from uh, Kathy LaFave, Alder Kathy LaFave, <coughs> um, that there were uh, people parking too close to the wildlife sanctuary entrance. <coughs> That's what this is. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this afternoon um, I, I ran into Kathy, asked her about this item, said everything fine with it, and we're not hearing any sort of issues or complaints or anything like that from the motoring public, and you know, we inspected the sign installation, what's good. Uh, she said she's it's been working successfully so uh, items five six and seven I see no reason uh, not to recommend moving forward with uh, their subsequent removals and, and establishment of those uh, items and moving them forward ordinance so moved in mass motion made to approve five six and seven do I hear a second 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 all in favor Aye. motion approved next meeting I know, we're moving. We're moving. We didn't have a meeting last month either. So uh, next meeting, Monday, September 17th. Good for you, Dave. And Dave. Have you got any hiccups for that date? No. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. 17th, good for you, Dave? Yeah, that works for me. Okay, all right. I'll make a motion. Can motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Motion made. Second. 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 Oh, second. Second. As I said, nobody wants to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Motion been made and second. All in favor? Aye. We're adjourned. Okay. Yeah. Order my press. That's Great work. 19 minutes. Lock <coughs> <coughs> off. Um, oh, just that. Did you go, go back to oh, the X up there? Get the X up there. Get the X up there. There you go. Oh, okay. Don't do anything more than that. Nope, just turn it off. Up top there. So that one was chucking on. Very top. Hold that down and come in. Okay. You first till next month, Dan. Just got a cell phone. Okay, now you can go there. Good man. My kids said, oh, Dad, you're in the 19th century.